Welcome back. You're watching Political Exchange. And of course, we're continuing our discussion with Lindy Rezulu. We're looking specifically at the preparations for that all important election uh, in Zimbabwe schedule for the end of the month. Lindy, I want to shift the discussion a little bit um, away from just the logistics. Other um, institutions in Zimbabwe have also been regulated by a series of recommendations, particularly to create this enabling environment where people can exercise their vote um, in relative uh, freedom and of course, transparently. And the media often is a very important institution, uh, particularly during this period. Um, from the facilitator's point of view, are the necessary mechanisms in place to ensure that particularly the dominance of, let's say, state media, um, but even the private media for that matter, because all the media in Zimbabwe have particular political views on the process, are you satisfied that they're going to be playing a role which will enable people to make independent decisions um, and where state resources won't be abused for narrow party political purposes? Well, I'd like to uh, take you back to the report of the facilitator to the last summit that was held in Maputo. He identified some of the areas that needed to be dealt with because recall also the fact that we had to narrow down, down from the many other issues in relation to the creation of a conducive environment and the implementation of the global political agreement. Yes. We had to narrow down to those issues we felt were very important for holding of free and fair elections. And therefore, the media was one of the areas in which the facilitator in his report indicated that not much had been done which right. had been expected to be done. And that is obviously a challenge because yeah. we will also look at what has been happening uh, right now during this very special uh, uh, vote. We'll see how the media has been conducting itself and, and, and also the state media, how the state media, because the issue here has always been about giving all the political parties time so that they can be able to be covered right. by the media whether it's print or electronic or whatever media this is a challenge i must say because what a sadek had agreed should be done was not uh, done they were supposed to go back and have an a, a, an, a, a, an inter a ministerial committee that was going to look at what can be done particularly in the minimum and right. now that that wasn't done it remains a challenge also in his report, he has spoken about the rule of law, which covered all the other issues that I had covered before. This is so important. with regard to the media, it really is a, an important element because this is what uh, most of the other political parties had been complaining about. Right. So it, in short, it hasn't been done. What was supposed to be done was not done. And of course, the issue of the judiciary is very critical. We yes. saw with the referendum, for example, people were being arrested, people were being charged. Um, what is the assessment of the um, judiciary and its behavior in relation to free political activity? Are the courts impartial? Are they able to adjudicate when there's you know, issues of dispute? Are you confident that the Zimbabwean justice system will support the democratization project uh, in this election? We hope they will because uh, if, if they don't, uh, at the end of the day, the credibility of the whole process um, is, is a big problem. We yeah. are hoping that they'll be able to to do that and uh, we know that in the past uh, there's been complaints by other political parties of the three political parties there are the, the MDCs have been complaining about the judiciary and so forth however I must indicate that during the meeting of SADC in Maputo yeah. uh, the, the leaders in the region said they wanted to respect uh, decisions that are taken by the judiciary and one could understand yeah. that they didn't want to set a, a, a wrong precedence however a message was sent by the, facili by, by the facilitator himself in his report that he would have wished and the leaders would have wished that all the issues of Zimbabwe at the current moment should be resolved politically yes. rather than being resolved by the judicial that uh, the leaders of the region are in record of. So we are hoping that in the in engagement that we will continue to have and that SADC will continue to have. And by the way, we are hoping also that JOMIC, which has had the capacity of trying to pick up on those issues and go to the relevant institutions to pick up, will also step up in this case because really at the end of the day, everybody wants to see 
a Zimbabwe with elections that are credible. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, South Africa's role in this entire process has been very, very much under the focus, very much under the microscope. Um, you have come in for severe criticism, particularly from uh, ZANU-PF uh, individuals. Some have argued, um, um, I was reading uh, uh, an article written by uh, Mr. Moyo, arguing that uh, you are a regime change agent. Um, you know, quite heavy criticism. Um, that could very well, you know, impact diplomatic relations. Uh, Lindy Ray, how do you respond to critics, particularly Zanu PF critics, that you are trying to interfere in the internal business of, of the party and that you are not uh, necessarily as, um, you know, non-partisan as you ought to be? I have absolutely no intention, have never had any intention to do something out of what the facilitator and the facilitation team have mandated. I had no intention whatsoever of rattling any cages anywhere on the basis that I'm carrying somebody's uh, agenda. I never carried anybody's agenda. What I did, what I will continue to do in as far as the situation in Zimbabwe is concerned, to carry the mandate mm -hmm. of the facilitator. And I will always uh, remain loyal to, to, to the global political agreement. And I will always remain to chasing those issues which, in my opinion, which are not just my personal opinion, though this is what they have in the global political agreement. And this is what we always agree upon. First, let me make it, maybe make this very straight. Mm -hmm. I was mandated by the facilitation team to be the one that engages with the media in as far as the, the process of Zimbabwe is concerned. Right. I was also mandated by the facilitation team to communicate with the international world in as far as where the process is. And I understood this mandate to be something that I need to carry to the best of my ability, and that's what I have done. And therefore, I have also said in no uncertain terms that I'm not prepared to be responding to some things that are on the outside that would not help the Zimbabwe process. And I understand very well Negotiations by nature are very difficult, right. and I've always understood what needs to be communicated, what does not need to be communicated. The bottom line is, everything that we are doing as South Africa, particularly being given a responsibility, needs to be communicated not only to the world, first and foremost to the Zimbabwean people themselves. It gives comfort to all of us in the facilitation team to know that the people out there have got confidence in what we are doing. And there's no other way they can have confidence in that unless they know exactly what we are doing. Mm -hmm. And so far, what I have done, I've only spoken about those things which I think are in the public domain. I have not uh, uh, dealt with issues which are back, uh, back uh, room discussions in as far as the negotiations are concerned. Okay, now of course South Africa Zimbabwe relations, everyone wants normal relations. Uh, there is incredible pressure not just on South Africa's economy but the economy of the region if one country slips far back as, um, as Zimbabwe has. Um, given the, the what rides on this election, how much rides on this election, Lindy Bay. How important is it that we have a result that is not in dispute, that we have a result that is in fact respected so that normal relations can in fact, you know, begin uh, between the two countries? Well, what has been happening in Zimbabwe in the past uh, five years that we've been dealing with this and earlier when former President Thabo Mbeki himself was dealing with the situation was that it strained uh, our economic capacity. It didn't strain our relationship. Mm -hmm. It strained our capacity because we know that Zimbabwe is one of those countries that are top on our agenda in as far as trade and a whole range of other right. things are concerned. So it's been important for South Africa to hang on to this and not drop the ball on this to make sure that we carry it up to the end. And the end, obviously, is ensuring that there's free, fair, and credible elections. What has also been happening is that from the South African government point of view, uh, the government has been very supportive mm -hmm. of the facilitation because I want us to separate the fact that there is a government relationship with everything that goes on from day to day. Right. And then there's the facilitation, facilitator and the facilitation team, which has been mandated by SADC. We are hopeful that uh, at the end of the day, the elections in Zimbabwe will be credible, 
we will do everything that we can in our power, firstly through the facilitator, President Jacob Zuma, but also through the, the, the SADC uh, team that has now been based on the ground to make sure that that happens. Because if anything else negative happens, it has a greater impact on South Africa. You know, I keep on repeating this to people that I've been in exile myself. I know what it is to be in a country where you, 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 you were not there because you wanted to be. This is a bigger picture for us. It's human dignity, human respect, and the fact that a lot of Zimbabweans are out there where they are now. They don't necessarily want to be there. They'd love to go back home. Mm -hmm. It's important for us as South Africa also to make sure that that happens. And the only way that can happen is for us to continue to assist the process, no matter how difficult it is, no matter what it costs, at personal level or at whatever collective yeah. level, it's important for us to get it done. Looking back, Lindy, I mean, you've been very intimately involved in the process. Um, we are not I in an ideal situation. Everybody knows that the situation that we have is uh, very different from the agreements that are outlined in the roadmap in the global political agreement. But having said that, um, what is the one thing you think that could have been done differently by the parties to create a more enabling environment um, that would have perhaps taken us further? And more importantly, what is it that South Africa could perhaps have done differently to help you know, create this, this process and, and this enabling climate? I think the first thing that I'd <coughs> like to say, which I think is a lesson to all of us, uh, particularly leaders of the African continent, is to be consistent and also is to be honest, mm -hmm. and also is also to be committed to decisions that you have taken and make sure that you implement them. Many people will say consistency, mm. honesty, doesn't go with the world of real politics. It should. <laughs> By the way, it should. As far as I'm concerned is that uh, if we want to create an, 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 an Africa mm -hmm. that uh, a leadership uh, that people of Africa will have confidence in. I think that if some people think that doesn't exist in politics, then it means there's lots of things that we need to do to bring that back. Mm -hmm. Because if we are to move forward and make sure that we fulfill our commitment to our own people, we need to do the best that we can to yeah. try and do that. And from the South African perspective, I think that there are lessons that we also learned of being much more robust right. in our engagement and ensuring that we, 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 we become much more firmer when we believe that we need to be firm. Mm -hmm. and, and it was a lesson in negotiations that you should know when to press, yeah. you should know when to ease up. I think that those lessons are lessons that we need to take forward because these challenges that we are seeing in Zimbabwe are probably challenges that we'll see in other places. Right. And I think that it is possible for us uh, to have a leadership that people can always have confidence in because there's nothing as painful as people seeing something called the global political agreement and having hope that the leaders who committed themselves, who signed this, are going to stick to it. Right. And that's not being naive in, in, uh, in the sense that maybe somewhere along the line certain things would change. Yes, we do understand that some things would change, but those things would cha should change for the better rather than to change for the negative. Because mm -hmm. had the global political agreement been implemented to its fullest and the spirit of the GPA had carried us throughout, believe me, we wouldn't if, I wouldn't even be sitting here and be wondering whether elections are going to be uh, what we expect them to be or not. So leaders of the continent need to commit themselves to their own people by implementing the decisions that they take.